spiritual life involves some level of effort from our side then it becomes very natural automatic for us it becomes part of our nature things we intend things we remain busy with our thoughts our behavior the lifestyle etc and once we begin certain level of a practice you see for example if you practice to be a good terrorist what goes on in your mind being a terrorist how to blow someone how to kill someone how to destroy many more in one go right that's an extreme example but a spiritual person instead of killing others he would perhaps sacrifice oneself and always seek for an opportunity to serve this godly kingdom so his life is guided by nobility and practice opens up many areas of understanding when we practice it's not just that we think of god but many great things open up in our hearts we become the vehicle of all those messages that lord jesus was not the only you know receiver of messages we all can receive similar messages from the holy spirit as they say which pervades everywhere once our heart becomes purer through our efforts through our intentions as long as our heart is available to purify ourselves this purity will radiate in rest of our activities for example when i meditate in the morning and after meditation i develop a certain state of peacefulness some calmness prevails and this calmness spectrum if you have or if you manage to have a scientific study and say okay this is the spectrum of consciousness of a meditative person saintly person angelic person and a terrorist you'll see a huge spectrum there and depending upon where you fall into that spectrum of consciousness will always be part of you during your activities sometimes you may go up or you or you may go down but your median will be the same and each day that median consciousness will go on changing for better it will get more and more refined as we meditate and with such consciousness when we work interact with family members there is and when we interact with better understanding life becomes better see i was a pharmacist i practiced for many years in new york city and especially in brooklyn the neighborhood stand of 80s and 90s and you know <laughs> end of the years and then i practiced almost till 2005 or so from 84 1984 this was my routine i would meditate in the morning have breakfast go to pharmacy work as a pharmacist now what happens during those working hours open the stores people are waiting for you especially when you are late sometime you know traveling from staten island to brooklyn takes you know unpredictable time so anyway people would wait and i was wondering why because the way you deal with each patient patiently <laughs> with lot of care you spend time you listen to them you listen to their problems and then not only dispense the medication but also share their life share our view points with a peaceful mind peaceful heart well of course uh, there are there were times when certain arguments would lead to some sort of irritable quarrel and i we had to explain you know many a times uh, people don't understand especially old age folks they, when the insurance policies are changing so rapidly something is covered something is not covered formulary changes and all kinds of stuff your copayment has gone up we have to end up calling to change the brand and old people especially they get so ruffled up on this and then you sit quietly hold their hands 
and explain. I think only a meditative mind can do that. I have seen many a times patients coming from different drug stores, entering our place with so much of uh, agitation. They start saying, oh, that SOB, so and so, that SOB, so and so, has insulted me. They don't know how to explain to me. They don't know how to talk to me. So suddenly the whole thing changes. When our people, you know, who those who work with meditative mind, I think they are able to do better justice. Same thing in interacting with even a mundane thing like opening the door of your bedroom or opening the bathroom door and how you open this in a faucet. How peacefully you open the faucet with so much of care and tenderness. I think all these are part of a spiritual life. You don't... Spiritual life to me means not to create ripples. And not to allow yourself also to have so much of turbulence in your heart. Be as serene as possible. And when serene heart is there, serenity will prevail everywhere, see. And um, I think it's the root of all these things is the practice. Without practice, without meditation, you cannot have a meditative state. And without meditative state, what are you going to offer? Same old stuff, same old henna. (laughs) 